All right. So as a brief introduction, I'm Tenille Hands, and I've spent the last 12 years at the National Film and Sound Archive in the curatorial teams there. Uh, so in 2015, I secured a 12-month placement at the Nelson Mandela Foundation as part of the government's Australian Volunteers for International Development <laughs> Program. My role title was Digitization Project Officer. That was my assignment brief. Um, now, a really quick rundown on the NMF and its archival collections. The Nelson Mandela Foundation is a Johannesburg-based non-profit organisation focused on memory, dialogue and legacy work and was founded by Nelson Mandela in 1999. They're the custodians of his life and times and are a committed facilitator of his living legacy, particularly through the archive. The physical collections include the handwritten papers, official prison records and unique artefacts from the personal archive of Madiba, in addition to the records of related organisations and individuals. The AV and stills collections contain documentation of significant events, interviews, productions dating from the early 1960s through to the present day. So they have state-of-the-art archival facilities, purpose-built, customised temperature, relative humidity, light levels, air quality controls, and the physical collection items housed on site had already undergone archival processes such as identification, deacidification, encapsulation, but it was the digital collections, born digital and digitised physical collections, that were variously housed in several different repositories, so cloud, local server and an external vendor. Um, past digitisation projects had occurred ad hoc, including a 2011 partnership with Google. And whilst Arden Bahama, the photographer, photographed large amounts of collection materials to high-res TIFFs with JPEG derivatives, the Google Arts and Culture portal did not fulfil the NMF's archival needs. And whilst I was initially tasked with digitisation of the collections with a view to an online portal, I quickly realised what they really needed was digital preservation infrastructure. So it's, it's, it's a pretty unifying conundrum, I think, between small and large collecting institutions that digitisation projects are very appealing with short-term investment and tangible outcomes, but digital preservation is much more likely to be the exact opposite. The problem being that without digital preservation planning, infrastructure, long-term investment and funding, digitisation projects alone can be a fruitless expenditure. And what I quickly realised was the most brilliant resource that the NMF had was its dedicated, passionate and extraordinarily knowledgeable archivist team. There were three archivists, including Rizzi Asala, the senior archivist, and archive director Vern Harris, who was keynote speaker at last year's Australian Society of Archivists. He's a gem. So I took my first four to six months to do this. I came up with three goals, that they needed the adoption of digital preservation best practice, that they needed to manually ingest digital collection materials into a new archival repository, that they needed access via a web-based dashboard. The other thing was I created indicators of success for them. Digital preservation system fully implemented, the staff trained and confident in digital collections, that the digital collection materials were accessioned and migrated into the repository, that their access to memory catalogue, the open source atom, reflected their entire collection holdings with preservation copies securely managed and access copies available. So briefly, flash forward 14 months, this is what we were able to do. We had a scanner which allowed for in-house digitisation of their paper materials. We had an on-site server allowing for secure, scalable data storage and management. Ongoing administration of the delivery of objects through Archive Matica and Atom, both open source, and object accounting and reporting services. We had an off-site backup because South Africa has intermittent power joy. Um, we installed Archive Matica, a digital preservation suite, microservices, and I wrote data entry guidelines for each collection in line with international archival standards. We started the creation of Atom catalogue records for the digital collections alongside the physical. We recruited and trained two data processes for cataloguing and ingest. We identified, funded, and outsourced through international tender and digitization of the 46664 film archive, damn smart in the house, hey. <laughs> we transitioned the digital film archive to be managed in house, formulated a five-year data migration project plan, 
And we began the migration of the entire digital archive, individually ingesting collection materials, and are collaborated to lock in funding for this five-year plan. So if you want to know any technical details of the above, because I know there's a lot, feel free to talk to me later or email, because what I really want to talk about is the practicalities of changing a managerial conversation away from short-term digitization projects to sustainable digital preservation practice, which is not a project, it's always ongoing. Um, I wanted to share with you a few key lessons I learned from my experience. Do your research. <laughs> and I don't mean superficial research, and I don't mean, and I say this with the greatest respect, just taking the directive from the highest superior. I took four to six months to work within the archival team before exploring options or in instituting any change. And I took the time to understand the complexities of their collections in practice. So how they used it, how they wanted to use it, what were the collection strengths and what were the team strengths. And this really enabled me to extensively consult and gain the archive team's input and their investment in a custom system that would suit them. So, for example, we had one archivist who was passionate about rights usage and the security of materials. And once I realised that was her priority, I could discuss the benefits of Adam's user settings and copyright data fields, and I could get her on board with that system. Another brilliant archivist was concerned about immediate accessibility of content, and she used DVD copies of all the collection to do that. Um, but once we were able to discuss the in-house transfer of AV material content through Archivematica, and the automated access derivatives, she was also on board. So another main point is communicate. Really, really communicate. Make sure everyone knows the why of what you're doing as well as the what in your preservation plan. It can feel really great having the technical knowledge, but please don't alienate people with techno babble. Take the time. And I don't mean dumb things down with your processes or your um, manuals or training sessions. But if you really don't get people actively understanding and contributing to your processes, they will not invest in it and it will cause you huge problems down the track. If you want sustainable change, you must create the infrastructure of accessible information that people can refer to. Which is why I love diagrams. Diagrams are great. Um, another good point is really be prepared to compromise. You're really going to have to create an open environment for feedback at every single stage of your process. You're going to have to adapt. A great example is internal capacity versus outsourcing. If you cannot add this to the current workload, you're going to have to suck it up and resource it. But my, one of my initial assessments was I thought the archivists would be the ones ingesting digital collections and cataloguing because they had the knowledge. But they already had a full workload. This was additional work that they couldn't take on. So once I realised that I had to resource and train an additional data ingest team, that got my plan going. Um, oh, look, there they are. Um, collaborate. Please collaborate. Gain advocates at all levels. What does the accessioner care about? What does the general public want from your collection? What outcome does a potential external funder want provided? You have to think about all of these wants and needs with your preservation plan, collaborate and adapt your communication. I cannot stress enough that gaining advocates on all levels in all different teams who understand what you want to achieve with your digital preservation plan and are invested in digital preservation is the best way to change perceptions and achieve stability, longevity and sustainable development for your long-term digital preservation of collections. Thank you.